common test for update 9.17.1 has started. A new branch of heavy tanks appeared in the German tech tree. Top Japanese heavy tanks received howitzers. The British medium tanks and American tank destroyers became faster. Some premium vehicles were buffed. The game interface was improved. Significant changes were made to strongholds. We'll tell you more right now. How did the German tanks change? Considering German heavy tanks, we had the following problems. These tanks were made many years ago and they're not relevant anymore. This is a large pool of problems that should be addressed integrally. You can't just rebalance one vehicle in this case. So we decided to add two new vehicles to the Maus branch, Tier 8 and Tier 9 ones. Playing them is like playing the Maus, but at the tiers below. They're very durable armored vehicles, but they're very slow. Well, all players know what the Maus is like. In the VK4502 branch, we decided to make the following changes. Since many players like the Tier 9 tank so much, we decided to add a similar tank to Tier 10. Well, it's a different vehicle, but with the same gameplay. This is the Panzerkampfwagen 7. This vehicle is very similar to the Global Maps VK7201 tank, but has a different gun. For another great change made to the E100 branch, we improved the armor penetration of the top 150mm gun. That's what the players have wanted for a while. We decided to revamp German medium tanks a bit, because they didn't really fit their battle tasks. They were tuned long ago, and since the environments have changed and the tanks have become out of date, we decided to buff them. Why were the Grill 15 and T110E5 changed? The Grill 15 is a very toxic vehicle at the moment with very high characteristics, and there are a lot of them in battles. So, based on the statistics and player feedback, we decided to decrease the battle efficiency of this vehicle a bit. There's nothing too drastic there, but we believe that our changes will be enough for this vehicle to stop creating this many problems. The T110E5, although it's not as toxic as the grill, it is very difficult to fight against this vehicle in certain situations. Even if you use premium shells, there's no guarantee you can penetrate it. So we decided to do two things. Reduce the armor behind the front wheel, so that the vehicle track can now be knocked off, and slightly reduce the armor of the commander's cupola at its center. Now, if you manage to hit it directly, you will have a good chance of penetrating it when playing a same-tier vehicle. But this isn't a guarantee, and the cupola will still be difficult to hit if the tank maneuvers well. How did the Type 4 Heavy and Type 5 Heavy change? At the moment, Japanese heavy tanks have a very nice feature, their howitzers. Players love these guns, but in the initial concept, the howitzer guns disappeared after Tier 8 tanks. So the players didn't really want to research these vehicles, since they'd be without the weapon they'd grown accustomed to. That's why we decided to add howitzers to the Tier 9 and 10 tanks as well. We also improved the armor of the Tier 10 Type 5 Heavy, because it was deemed insufficient. We believe that these new howitzer guns will increase player interest in them, and those who like the Tier 6 OI tank or Tier 7 and Tier 8 tanks will research top-tier vehicles more actively. What changes were made to the American tank destroyers and British medium tanks? American tank destroyers, the T-28, T-28 prototype and T-95 are the vehicles built on one base, with specific differences. They are the slowest vehicles in our game. They are very difficult to play at the moment due to their extremely low speed. We decided to fix that. All these vehicles will now be able to travel 20 kilometers per hour and higher. The problem of the British medium tanks is their low maximum speed. Players don't really like medium tanks without armor that can roll at only 40 kilometers per hour. So we decided to increase the average maximum speed to 50 kilometers per hour to make these tanks more competitive. 
We also made their guns more convenient to fire. We also decided to buff several problematic premium tanks and update 9.17.1. They are the Panther M10, Panzer IV Schmalterm, Japanese Tiger, Soviet T-34-85M, and the British Tier 8 FV-4202 medium tank. Why did strongholds need to be changed? There are two main problems with strongholds. The first is the so-called cover attacks, when a whole bunch of clans conduct fake attacks at each other, thus reducing all combat activity to nothing. So they don't battle themselves, and they don't let other clans attack each other, meaning there's no real combat activity between strongholds. The reason for this is that clans can choose their opponents and attack each other. The second problem is that the ability to pillage the opponent's stronghold and destroy its structures scares off weaker clans, and sometimes even average clans, from participating in battles for stronghold. This means they can't upgrade their stronghold higher than level 4, because due to pillages by the enemy, all their efforts towards developing their strongholds go up in smoke. What will new strongholds look like? The most important change awaiting players in the new strongholds is the complete withdrawal of the Battles for Stronghold mode. It will be replaced by the Advances mode. This mode is somewhat similar to the old one. The two clans conduct a series of battles against each other with the shift of the front line along the so-called route, already familiar to the players. The similarities end there. In everything else, the new mode is completely different. First of all, clans are unable to choose their opponents in the advances mode. The opponent is chosen by a matchmaker. And this opponent, with a very high probability, will have a skill level that is almost the same as the skill level of the clan that's searching for an opponent, with an aim to creating the fairest possible battle. Secondly, a clan that loses the battle won't lose anything at all. The victorious clan will still receive industrial resource, and the size of the earned industrial resource will depend on both how far this clan advanced along the route and the level of their own stronghold. Since we removed the battles for stronghold mode, another thing many clans found unpleasant, the obligatory defense period will also go away. Now, clans can choose whether or not they want to play the advances mode. It's entirely optional, but beneficial. Currently, both skirmishes and advances are the open modes, so clans can invite legionnaires. And what's important, these legionnaires can be clan or non-clan players. We aim to make it easy for players to find battles when they want to fight. Perhaps, to the regret of some clans, we abandon the war department. There will be no such structure in the new strongholds. However, clans will receive certain compensation for it. Also, clans will still have the opportunity to earn gold by playing skirmishes and advances. They can do so in the war games mode. This is a competitive mode for the clans that take part in the wars between strongholds. But this isn't everything. The battle interface was also changed and improved. Now players can adjust the width of damage indicators. The panel of received damage will let you know who has shot at you and with what type of shell. These changes will help players react faster when it matters most. Simplified vehicle characteristics in the garage became more informative. Now you can clearly see how specific equipment affects the vehicle characteristics. The tank carousel was also improved. Now it displays information about victory percentage, mastery badges, and marks of excellence on the gun. We continue to give more vehicles HD visuals. In update 9.17.1, more than 20 vehicles received their new models. That's all for now. Take part in the testing. Leave your comments and feedback. Together, we can make the game better.